Hey there, I'm JD Simo, and uh, I'm here having some fun at Carter Vintage today um, with a guitar that I've uh, known about for a, a lot of my life. Um, Mike Bloomfield is, uh, is, I mean, I have hundreds of, literally hundreds of heroes, but, um, but Mike is um, a very special one and a very important one to me. Um, born and raised in Chicago. Um, he rose to prominence in the early to mid 60s, um, most notably with the Paul Butterfield Blues Band. And um, as a result of, uh, of that, he, uh, he ended up uh, getting in the circle around Bob Dylan and Bob called on him to play on Highway 61 and then he played the famous Newport Folk Festival when Dylan went electric, which really, Mike is the one who, I mean, Bob did go electric, but Mike really went nuts on that performance and uh, changed history, really, and um, went on to form his own group, the Electric Flag, with, uh, with Buddy Miles, who was unknown at the time. This is before the Band of Gypsies with Jimi Hendrix, and some old cohort, cohorts of his from Chicago, and um, and then his most successful was actually the Super Session record that he made with Al Cooper, who played on uh, um, Like a Rolling Stone with him, uh, famously for Bob uh, earlier, and um, he sort of unfortunately faded into obscurity um, in the 70s, uh, and then met an untimely death. Um, uh, which is tragic and sad. Um, but he made a record in late 75, early 76, um, that I think is, as I've gotten older, my way into Mike was listening to uh, East West, um, the second Paul Butterfield blues band record. Um, that was the first thing I ever heard of him. Um, and then the two Electric Flag records, Super Session, Live Adventures, um, and obviously the iconic first Butterfield Blues Band record. Um, but uh, as I've gotten older, the record that he made in 75, early 76, which was initially meant to be an instructional um, uh, album for Guitar Player Magazine. It was called If You Love These Blues, Play Them If You Please. And Mike, um, this is the guitar Mike used on that record. Um, Mike only had five very sort of iconic instruments in his life. Um, this one is the one that he used probably the longest. He had this up until his death. Um, and um, other instruments, including another Telecaster um, that uh, Carter's actually has here as well, which is crazy that there's two of Mike's guitars here at Carter Vintage, but um, um, you know, this was a special instrument to him, and it's 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 kind of crazy to uh, uh, to get to look at it and play it. And um, unfortunately, a lot of Mike's instruments have gone under uh, heavy modifications um, or alterations. Um, this is actually, you know, as far as I know, you know, it's it, it, which I'm not the expert here. I'm surrounded by experts. Um, as far as I can tell, you know, this is in the condition it was in when he used it, which is which makes it all the much much more special. So obviously, I don't talk, I don't think I've ever talked on a Carter Vintage uh, video, um, but Michael means a lot to me, and um, and I just wanted to talk about him and this guitar. And um, the last anecdote before I play some music on it for you is just the importance of. Um, pre Eric Clapton, pre Jimi Hendrix, um, pre Almond Brothers, pre Billy Gibbons and ZZ Top, you know, like pre guitar, pre Jimmy Page. Mike was kind of the original guitar hero for the baby boomer generation. Um, in the 50s, you had Scotty Moore, you had Chuck Berry, you had Bo Diddley, you had Buddy Holly. And between that, the birth of rock and roll as we know it, to the late 60s, the sort of era of the guitar era. Um, 
that's where Mike fits in. And unfortunately, he's sorely kind of overlooked and not as forgotten and, 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 and is forgotten, not as remembered is what I meant to say, um, as he deserves. Um, because when Eric Clapton came to America to play with Cream, um, their, their first shows at the Fillmore in San Francisco were with the electric flag. And like Clapton wanted to meet Mike, you know, and vice versa. There's a famous photo um, of, from Monterey Pop of Mike holding court. And there's a pretty much unknown Jerry Garcia a completely unknown Jimi Hendrix, Brian Jones, they're hanging with Mike, you know. Um, you know, he was the guy. He was the, he was the guy to look up to um, for, for all those, that generation. And, um, you know, it's then ushers in the era of the guitar hero and Mike sort of quietly fades away, sort of. Um, so anyway, so... I strongly recommend check check out the first two Paul Butterfield Blues band records, the first record and the second one East West, Super Session with Al Cooper, uh, which uh, uh, which is his an iconic record, Live Adventures with Al Cooper, um, the Electric Flag records, um, and most importantly check out if you love these blues play them if you please because he goes through the history of american guitar playing and uh, mostly i would say with the exception of a couple of acoustic tracks it's all in this instrument so anyway love you mike